Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail. More detail. Do a writing sample. We have a Banu Euphoria in the Earl Grey Tea. We have another Banu Euphoria in the Earl Grey Tea. Uh, we have a Mont Blanc, and this is the writer's edition, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle 1902 edition. We have a uh, Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, and uh, this is the Le Petit Prince Aviator Solitaire Due. We have a Mont Blanc Brothers Grimm Writer's Edition. We have a Mont Blanc Writer's Edition Jules Verne. We have a Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, and this is the uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. We have an a, a Classic Pen CP5 in the uh, Vintage. Uh, made by Parker in the duo fold and then a classic pen CP5 in the modern and then we have an Anoto Charles Dickens and this is the David Copperfield so I think let's look at these pens in a little bit more detail so this is uh, um, a, a really uh, nice Banu Euphoria Old Grey Tea which uh, is uh, a Goulet exclusive um, this one was actually uh, sent to me uh, by a, uh, a friend, uh, I'll call him a friend, um, a uh, subscriber, uh, and they heard that I was after uh, a second one of these because I like Earl Grey tea so much, and uh, offered to um, uh, buy and, and ship it to me. So this is the beautiful Earl Grey tea, so thank you Bill again for uh, sending this. Um, really, really lovely gift, and uh, I do like um, the Earl Grey tea pen a lot. If I unscrew uh, the cap here, you'll see that this has a medium nib on. Now, uh, the one that I originally bought uh, had a broad nib on it, and I, I really wanted the broad nib to start with, and reason being, I wanted to ink it up with uh, a um, light orangey sort of coloured ink, uh, and that was a dominant industry Earl Grey tea uh, and not the diamond Earl Grey tea. So I thought a broad a pen, a broad nib would be good for that. And, and it really was. And I love it to bits. But I also really, uh, I, I have a lot of pens inked up with diamond Earl Grey, which is a grey ink. And I, I kind of still wanted to put a grey ink in there. So uh, I was uh, seriously looking at a um, medium nib and uh, Bill... Uh, very graciously offered uh, to send me this one that he had bought. So again, thank you, Bill, for that one. That is a really nice uh, pen. And then I have my original Earl Grey tea here uh, with the broad nib. Um, the pattern's slightly different, and um, you can see here it's got a broad Schmidt steel nib. Uh, these are cartridge converters, and you can post the cap. Now, I've been deliberating for a while now, um, how I was going to tell the two apart, other than having to open the cap and look at whether or not there was an M or a B on, on the nib. And and I, I think I have now done so, because if you look here on the right-hand side of the pen, and actually you might not see it in the tray so much, so let me bring this up close. Um, this one here has a lot more blue in it, and that's uh, my broad nib version. Uh, so... I just have to remember B for broad and B for blue. Uh, uh, it's got lavender there. So there's a lot more lavender there. There is a lot more lavender on the medium nib if you rotate it. But I just have to look to the right of the clip. And if there's a lot of la blue lavender there, then it is the broad nib version. So uh, I'm not having to put a sticker on the cap finial or the body finial. I'm just trying to sort of think in my mind, B for blue, B for broad, and 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 that seems to be working for me at the moment. Um, that might change at some point uh, in, in the future. I don't know. But at least for now, it's something that I can remember. And with that, I did actually buy uh, a little bit more ink. and And I say that with a little bit of a sigh in my voice because... 
I don't need any more ink and I've got over 400 bottles. I think it's probably 500 bottles of ink. But I'm only buying the ink that I like and the ink that I want to replenish. So I did buy um, at least a couple of bottles. Uh, I think it might have actually been three. I'm just having a look. Um, it was two, two 80 mil Diamine Earl Grey tea bottles. And then I bought, uh, I think, a couple of 30 mil bottles as well. Because I'm using this ink in a lot of pens. So for me... I, I am going through that ink a lot, and I do like the colour on that ink. Uh, I also bought um, uh, Darn My Majestic Purple to replenish my existing bottle, and uh, a Darn My Meadow in 80ml as well. And then I bought some 30ml bottles of Darn My Meadow, Meadow, I think. Uh, I think Darn My Apple Glory, Darn My Poppy Red, and Darn My Wild Strawberry. Uh, these are all inks that I use, and... Uh, some more than others, but but uh, I, I decided that uh, I should replenish some of those inks. I'm not out of those inks. I do have a little bit of a, uh, um, a fear of a FOMO, fear of missing out, where there are inks that I've got one bottle of and they then sell out and or it, normally discontinued, so you can't get any more of those inks. So... I have decided uh, any of the inks I really do like, and I'm sure they're not going to, I'm sure they'll or, or be discontinued, but if they are, I'll buy them. I'll, I, I did also buy a, a couple of bottles of 50ml uh, 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 bottles of Waterman Inspired Blue, because I do like that, and I am writing with it in this pen quite a lot as well. Um, probably do need to replenish a few other bottles, but... Uh, I will do that probably later, maybe towards Christmas time, perhaps. Uh, the next pen I have inked up uh, today is the Mont Blanc. And uh, this is the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And it is the 1902 edition. Uh, got a lovely snowflake there. That is a mother of pearl. It's got a magnifying glass on this as well. Uh, and that hound behind that magnifying glass does glow in the dark. Um, this was an interesting pen. I bought it new. Um, it wasn't used, but I got it for a significant discount. And I, this was the only pen I, I think I mentioned, uh, maybe it was on last week's or the weeks before, currently ink that uh, when I bought the uh, La Petite Prince Aviator, I, I, didn't put Mont Blanc ink in there, and I inked it up with KWZ Nuki Brown. Uh, but on this one, because it was new, I just decided I should probably put a Mont Blanc in there. And I put Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, and I am loving loving that ink in, in this pen. That is a more of a darker brown of ink. Uh, and you can see a little bit of it there around the section. I, I will wipe that off. Uh, but uh, you can see there, it's got a number six size nib. Uh, these are piston filling pens. They're not designed to be posted. Unfortunately, the majority of the newer Mont Blancs, um, the, 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 the writer's editions, do not post the caps. Um, they are 146-esque size. Uh, but that's that said, like that they have a 146 or a number six size nib, not a 149 size nib, but... The actual bodies and the caps of the pens actually make actually a little bit more like a 140 of size. Uh, but that one, I, I do enjoy writing with. It is a darker brown ink. I thought about putting some other ink in there. I thought about maybe Diamond Ochre. That's a lighter brown. Uh, I have got, uh, what was it, Pilot Washizuku Sakushi as well, which is, uh, I think I got a couple of bottles of that but that's that ink is um now discontinued as well um so i might change the ink at some point but i am liking the mont blanc toffee brown in this this uh, arthur conan doyle uh, the next pen is the la petit prince aviator solitaire duet um this is a really beautiful pen it's it's a platinum pen uh you can see there uh, platinum as in metal, not platinum as in the brand. Um, but it also has this lovely uh, leather cap, which is quite engraved. Um, and uh, you've got a planet there for 
the Le Petit Prince story. You've got the plane for the aviator. Uh, you've got some nice stitching there as well. Uh, this really is a beautiful pen. Um, 146 size again, so number one four or number four number six nib uh, for 146. Uh, again, you can't post the cap on this. Uh, I don't need to. It's a very weighty pen. Uh, I do like this this pen a lot. Uh, so so that one uh, I have inked up today, and I, I've got it inked up with KWZ Nuki Brown, which is a really nice brown. I probably could put Diamond Ochre or Akamai SBRE Brown in there, but I'm I'm really liking the KWZ Nuki Brown. So uh, that's still inked up with that. Uh, and typically, I think I've said this many times before, but once I find an ink, uh, typically I will choose an ink to ink up a pen and probably 70, 80% of the time, that ink I am actually really spot on with, not only in terms of the color, but also because of how lubricated that nib writes. Uh, and then I, I will normally typically stick with that because I have, so many pens that I can just think up another pen. Um, but this pen is the Mont Blanc um, Writer's Edition Brothers Grimm. Uh, this was a pen that uh, I bought, I think, a few days after the Aviator. I picked up, I saw the Aviator uh, at Roy at Izod's, and it, I think that was the one that uh, I saw it, it sold, I saw it, it sold, I saw it again. So third time it sold, and then I saw it again fourth time, and I and I messaged Roy and said, "Hey, look, what's up with this Aviator? Is somebody just like returning this, buying and returning this all the time?" And he said, "No, I've actually had quite a few of these. So I bought that, but then I was already on the lookout for this Brothers Grimm. I found it in a uh, jewelry store, and they only had two there, and uh, I got the last one." So very glad that I did. Got it for a good price as well. Um, so it's got a, a Brothers Grimm nib on it. Again, number six size nib. Can't post the cap. But a, a lot of this is that it's it's a hunt and getting it for a good price. Uh, this pen, I know, it used to retail originally when it came out at £7.95. You could get it in Colt Pens. Uh, for that price, um, I think they might have been discounting when they shouldn't have done though. Um, but now you're looking at nine ninety five and above. I, I think it's, I think it's a thousand and fifty now. So I I got this for close to the original price that Colt Pens were were selling it, but I bought it from a, a a jeweler's shop. So I got a good price on it, and I kind of kicked myself when I couldn't get hold of it. Uh, for that price and I said I'm not going to be paying 1050 for that pen uh, I'm sure it's a nice pen but I just I'm not going to pay that for it and uh, I found it in a jeweler's a couple of days after buying this one uh, a little bit like a bus multiple pens come along at the same time and, uh, and I bought it so there you have it and then this is the Mont Blanc Writer's Edition Jules Verne now this is a 2003 pen uh, I believe it, it's uh, sterling silver. Uh, it's possible it could be platinum under this. Uh, but you've got this guilloche um, that, that is in there. And then you've got this um, sort of Fabergé-like uh, enamel uh, over the top of it. It just makes it look really nice. Um, so this is a 2003 edition pen from Mont Blanc. Uh, again, number six size nib there that you can see. Um, but the difference here is the older Mont Blanc, the writer's editions, you can post the caps. So uh, I do kind of like a look of that, um, but it is very back weighted. And, and that's why I think this is either sterling silver or, or still maybe. Um, I'm guessing Mont Blanc, it's probably sterling silver. Um, but yeah, this it's a really nice pen, and I managed to do a swap with a friend, Tony, in Kansas City. Uh, I gave him a couple of my Visconti uh, Millionaires, and and uh, he sent me this. So uh, very glad uh, that we did that swap. I think we're both very glad on that. Uh, he's got a couple of Millionaires that he always wanted, 
and uh, I've got a uh, Mont Blanc uh, Jules Verne that I've not always wanted, but have wanted probably for the last year to 18 months now. A little bit later than uh, the Aviator and the Brothers Grimm, I also managed to pick up this uh, from Roy, I think it was Roy Izod's again. Uh, he's a bit of a dangerous person. He's a little bit like uh, Brian at Chatterley Luxuries, unfortunately. Uh, at least he's coming that way. He's getting a lot of nice pens. So this is the Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, and it's the Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, which uh, um, I always want to say Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's not. It's, it's um, oh, I can't remember the... It's going to come to me, and I'm going to kick myself afterwards. It, it's the... Uh, Treasure Island, there you have it. Treasure Island uh, uh, story um, that, that Robert Louis Stevenson wrote. So you've got what looks to be like uh, like a, a, either a sword or maybe a, a peg leg. You've got the uh, skull and crossbones as a Mont Blanc star, which I, I think is nice. I, I, I like that Mont Blanc can change this up and not worry about um, the brand uh, logo or look. Uh, and then you've got all of these uh, X's with uh, what should be a big X, uh, if I can get it there. X marks the spot for the treasure. Um, I think this is the telescope for uh, looking uh, through. Um, again, number six size nib. Uh, very weighty pen, but of course you, you can't post the cap. So Certainly, the more recent years of the uh, Mont Blanc Writers Editions, you've not been able to post the caps. Uh, I don't particularly know why that is the case. It just is. And uh, it's a shame because I know a lot of people out there, a lot of you that's watching this, do like to post your caps. And uh, it's a shame that you can't, unfortunately. But... These are also longer pens uh, and more weighty pens, so I, I guess you don't you don't need to in terms of making the pen longer or making the pen more weightier. Um, it, it's more if you just don't want to lose the cap or misplace it when you're writing with the pen. The next pen inked up is uh, the Classic Pen CP5, uh, made by Parker for Andy Lambrew of Classic Pens. This is the vintage, and Morelli had to break out their old engraving machine uh, from, I think, around the Second World War um, to, to engrave this pen. Uh, it's not been used for so long. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. I picked this up from John at St. John's Pens at the London Pen Show. Uh, eh, some ink there on, on that um, uh, feed. Um, the Parker feeds are always quite um, narrow. Um, I'm not sure if it's an ebonite. I think it's plastic. Looking at the the uh, shine to the feed, uh, you've got a number six size Parker nib there. Um, uh, this is a, a, a medium nib uh, cartridge converter, unlike the Mont Blancs that are piston. You can post the cap on that one, which is actually quite nice. Uh, so that that is a, a, a good thing. Uh, for all you cap posters, but yeah, that's uh, uh, quite a um, nice um, pen, sterling silver, uh, gold trim uh, and clip, and just nice. And then the other pen I got at the same time from John at St. John's Pens was the uh, classic pen CP5, but this is in the modern. Uh, so again, a slightly different pattern there. Um, I honestly say that this was probably the one that sold me the most because uh, it's a little bit of a like a diamond pattern on it, and uh, but these were not not as a set. I could have bought these separately if I wanted to, but I decided that even though the numbers limited edition numbers on these two pens are not the same, uh, I I still thought it would be a shame to. To split them up and let somebody else take the other pen. So uh, I did uh, buy both of these uh, from John. And again, another uh, Parker nib there. Uh, number six size. And again, a medium nib. 
again you can see the the profile on that feed uh, very very narrow um, don't have any friends on on Parker feeds as well um, a little bit of a love-hate relationship I find with that is that sometimes uh, if more ink comes out it's got nowhere to be absorbed into between the fins so it can burp a little bit uh, or, or just like put, put a, a drop of ink onto the page especially if you've just filled it up so you kind of need to do the because uh, it's a cartridge converter fill the converter up expel a couple of drops into the bottle uh, and then remove it from the ink bottle and then just twist the piston back up so you're pushing some air into that converter uh, and that just helps with that um, you can again post a cap on this and it does post uh, pretty good uh, sterling silver it's a really really nice pen uh, very very weighty as well and you probably know that I like weighty pens so so that works for me quite well and then the last pen which I picked up I think it was uh, around Christmas last year I was really on the hunt for a couple well maybe a couple of pens one or two pens but uh, it was leading up to Christmas and it, there really wasn't any pens that I wanted uh, and then I, I looked at Izod's I looked and there wasn't any Inotos there I looked on eBay and I found this one out on Izod's but it wasn't on his website so I very quickly uh, bought this on eBay I kind of thought that maybe he'd forgotten to remove it from eBay but uh, lo and behold, a couple of days later, just after Christmas, it arrived. And very, very glad of that. So uh, that that is a really nice pen. This is the Charles Dickens Copperfield, David Copperfield. Uh, it's got a number seven size, uh, medium 18 count gold nib. Again, cartridge converter. Uh, you can post the cap there. Most of the you typically can post the cap. But it does have this like diffusion bonded acrylic here but which is what the classic pens like lm1 cp5s are made of uh beautiful material and uh i'm glad that i picked that up when i did uh it just reminds me that when you have a seller that has a, a popular website uh and they also list their pens on ebay go and check ebay as well because sometimes they can mess up and just forget to put it back on their website or even upload it to the website but they've put it on ebay so um it's always a reminder for me just to go and do that and double check so there you have it that's my uh, 10 pens currently inked for this week i think let's now go and do a writing sample so the first pen inked up uh today is the uh, banu euphoria earl gray t and this was uh uh, graciously uh, sent to me by uh, Bill so thank you Bill I will do an ink swatch here and this really does have the um, Earl Grey from Diamine ink in there you can see a proper grey ink um, so this is the Banu Euphoria Earl Grey T and this nib writes really well um, it's it's a beautiful nib so it's a medium uh, and it's a still smith nib um and then the ink in here as i've mentioned is diamine oh gray and interestingly enough diamine just called it Earl gray and uh dominant industry call it Earl gray t so just a, a slight difference in uh the naming there uh, now, this is another Banu Euphoria Earl Grey T, but this is we inked up with a dominant industry ink. And this is my original broad nib one that I bought from Goulet. And so we'll do Banu Euphoria Earl Grey T. And it's a broad and it's a steel nib and then the ink in here is a uh, dominant industry and it's Earl Grey tea which actually isn't um, 
a UK or retailer exclusive. I originally thought it was. I originally thought that um, this was a Colt Pens exclusive because I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Or everywhere I looked, it was just in Colt Pens. Uh, I think Colt Pens may have got their order earlier than others. But now I know in the UK, Pure Pens sell it as well. Um, there are um, other retailers around the world that, that sell it as well. So, um, yeah, I think... Um, I think Goulet might sell it. I think uh, Atlas Station will sell it as well. Uh, so there are definitely others that, that are selling that ink now, which is good to see. The next pen inked up is the Mont Blanc uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle 1902 edition. So it will do uh, an ink swatch. And... I do like this ink. It's it's a, a moderately wet writer. It's not fire hose type wet. Um, but this is the Mont Blanc uh, Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, because he was knighted. I think he was knighted after his death, though. Um, and uh, it's a medium. Well, it's a 1902, and it's a medium 18 cat gold nib. Uh, the 1902 edition is the more expensive one. So typically a lot of time Mont Blanc will do um, an entry-level version of the pen. They'll do a mid-level, which is what this one is, and then they'll do a high-end level. So typically the entry-level will be probably around about £1,000, euros, dollars. The medium-level will be probably around about two, two and a half thousand, and then the maybe up to 3,000 even, and then the higher level will probably be somewhere anywhere from about 6,000 to maybe, I want to say 10,000, but I've seen some at 60,000. So, yeah, just insane. Um, so I, I managed to pick up the, the medium uh, version or the 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 um, the medium price version of, of this model, which was good. Um, but I didn't pay anywhere near full price, thankfully, for it. Um, the ink in here is Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, which is a, a, a lovely, uh, very dark brown ink. It almost comes out, it, I, I'd say it's, it's a darker chestnutty brown, almost towards black. It's a really, really dark brown ink. The next pen inked up is the Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince uh, Aviator Solitaire Due. And uh, this is a lovely pen. I really do love this a lot. Not that I don't like the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle pen. Um, I, I'm a fan of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle um, and Sherlock Holmes. But this one, I think, I just prefer a little bit more. Which is strange because I thought it would be the other way around. So this is uh, Mont Blanc, and uh, this is the Le Petit Prince Aviator. I'm just going to abbreviate it to that. Uh, it's a medium, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is KWZ uh, Nuki. Brown, which is short for Newquay Brown Ale or Newcastle Brown Ale, um, and that's the kind of colour that Newcastle Brown Ale, which is a, a beer or an ale, um, is. And I kind of want to put that in the Arthur Conan Doyle pen. I think though I might actually eventually put maybe Darwin Ochre or Ackerman SBRE Brown or something like that. Maybe a slightly lighter brown. Um, but I do know, well, I know that Darmine Ochre is a very nice lubricated ink, and I know that KWZ Nuki Brown is as well. So the next pen inked up is the uh, Mont Blanc Writers Edition Brothers Grimm. And I really would like the more, that this this is the entry-level version. Uh, I really would like the mid, middle-priced uh, version, but it's way out of my price range that I would be willing to pay. So... Um, from that perspective, I'm happy with what I have, but at some point, maybe that pen will come along at a really good price, and I might buy it. 
but for the time being i'm very happy with this one so this is the mont blanc and it's the brothers grim and if you don't know they wrote uh, a lot of kids stories and nursery rhymes like uh, hansel and gretel and, and that um this has a medium 18 karat gold nib uh and then uh, the ink in here is because i always get this one wrong it's kwz gray lux which is actually becoming a, a favorite black for me it's it's not really a gray it might be in an extra fine nib but it's it's more of a, a really dark dark gray almost black ink it's gonna say pen it's ink the next pen inked up is uh, the Mont Blanc, and this is a writer's edition, Jules Verne. So this is a, a pen that was, came out in 2003. You can still find these available. Um, the Mont Blanc limited edition number range of pens typically are in the thousands, if not sometimes tens of thousands. Whereas if you look at maybe... A Visconti or a Montegrappa, you're probably looking around about 800 or 888 or or even 188 pens. Um, so um, th these are still available. You can still buy them. There's a lot on the used market. It's just how much you really want to pay for them. So this is the Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, and it's the Jules Verne uh, from 2003. Uh, it's a medium and it's an 18 cap gold nib and then the ink in here is waterman inspired blue which is uh i've just bought 100 more milliliters of ink so 250 milliliter bottles of so waterman inspired blue um so i guess i'm going to be writing with that ink and probably that pen for quite some time uh, but I do like the colour. That That is a really nice colour of ink. The next pen inked up is the Mont Blanc Writer's Edition of Robert Louis Stevenson. And we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, this is a dark ink. Um, I'm just going to have to take a look at what that is. So this is the Mont Blanc. Uh, and it's the uh, Robert Louis Stevenson and uh, it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib and uh, just going to double check that ink it is diamine graphite which is quite a dark ink. It's not as dark as KWZ Grey Lux, but it is still quite a dark grey ink, uh, certainly darker than Diamine Earl Grey, uh, which is an interesting colour. The next pen inked up is the Classic Pen CP5 in the Vintage. And we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, for anyone that hasn't tried Parker nibs, specifically more Parker Duo fold nibs, they typically are very hard and a little bit more towards a dry writer. So this is the Classic Pens CP5 uh, in the Vintage. Uh, and the ink in here also is a dry ink, so that's making it a little bit more wet it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold uh, nib and then the ink in here is kwz old smoke which uh, is a, a lighter gray and i uh, have to say that uh, i do like that and i will um being vintage i i thought i would pair it up with old smoke old being vintage uh, i might change that to another ink at some point uh, i just don't know 
I could put graphite from diamine in there. Um, I've got other grays as well. I think I've got um, some Venusus gray. So I might try something like that in there at some point. The next pen inked up is the classic pen CP5, and this is in the modern. So this one does look a little bit more wetter. Um, both of these are medium nibs. It, it kind of makes me feel that the vintage version of the CP5 is maybe a little bit more towards a fine, but I think it's just down to the ink and how wet the nib writes. So we do a classic pens cp5 uh, modern and you can just see there that this definitely looks more wetter uh, in a medium 18 cat gold nib and it feels a little bit less rigid as well this nib uh, and then uh, the ink in here i just need to double check that but i'm pretty sure yeah it's diamine earl gray But that, it, it's a nice writing nib. I, I kind of feel that maybe I just need to put a, maybe I, I could put a black in there. Um, I think silver, I, because the silver pen, I probably would put a gray ink in there, to be honest. Um, and then this pen uh, is the last pen here inked up. This is the Enoto, uh Charles Dickens David Copperfield. So we'll do uh, another ink swatch here. Now, interestingly, this is also inked up with KWZ Old Smoke. And this definitely does write wetter. It's still a little bit more of a drier nib. Uh, but this is the Anoto um, uh, Charles Dickens David Copperfield which was one of his stories. And it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and in the ink, as I mentioned, it is KWZ Old Smoke. But uh, it, it does show that this is certainly, you can see here the difference. It is writing wetter. Uh, so maybe I just need to floss the tines a little bit on the classic pen cp5 just to make it write a little bit wetter so i think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time so we have a Banu euphoria earl gray t in a medium steel nib inked up with diamine earl gray we have a Banu euphoria earl gray t in a broad steel nib inked up with dominant industry earl gray t we have a mont blanc sir arthur conan doyle at 1902 edition in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with mont blanc toffee brown we have a Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince Aviator, a Douai in a medium 18 karat gold nib, inked up with KWZ Nuki Brown. We have a Mont Blanc uh, Writer's Edition Brothers Grimm in a medium 18 karat gold nib, inked up with KWZ Grey Lux. We have a Mont Blanc Writer's Edition Jules Verne, which is 2003 edition, in a medium 18 karat gold nib, inked up with Waterman Inspired Blue. We have a Mont Blanc Writer's Edition uh, Robert Louis Stevenson in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with diamond graphite. We have a classic pen CP5 in the vintage in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Old Smoke. We have a classic pen CP5 in the modern in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with diamond Earl Grey. And then last but not least, we have an Anoto Charles Dickens David Copperfield in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Old Smoke. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.